Okay, it's a, a great pleasure to be here, and th thanks to the organizers, uh, especially uh, Obisekda, uh, for the kind invitation. Uh, <clears throat> so today I will talk about anomalous transport of interacting self-propelled particles. So there are interactions. So it's hopefully it won't be boring. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, this uh, so this work uh, i mean uh, today i will present uh, mainly the sorry 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 okay so uh, mainly i present the first one uh, which uh, has been done with my student tonmoy he is in the audience uh, the second one uh, i will try to touch upon third one uh, uh, it is not uh, on the uh, archive so we are uh, uh, that's in the in preparation so i will be happy to discuss Okay, so um, stop it. Oh, pause, pause. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> thirty seconds, right? Um, uh, so this, uh, uh, these works actually have been uh, completely done by uh, my students. So uh, credit goes to them. I'm there. I'm here to defend. So uh, <clears throat> okay. Of course, this discredit goes to me. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is the brief outline uh, introduction, and then I will ask uh, how density relaxes in such process uh, in such processes. Uh, then I will define bulk diffusion coefficient or collective diffusion coefficient in uh, two paradigmatic models, uh, run and tumble particles and long range lattice gases. Uh, if time permits, uh, I will uh, show you the result for current fluctuations, which we, we have calculated from using the microscopic dynamics. And then I will summarize. Okay, so interacting self propelled particles, they move ballistically with speed, some characteristic speed v uh, in a random direction, which persists for time, which is called persistence time, tau p, uh, related to inverse of the flipping rate, I mean, direction. So you can say spin is flipping or something, uh, uh, which again can be related to the persistence length divided by velocity. So you can see there are actually, so I'll interchangeably use these parameters. So basically the, the parameters here, the flipping rate, uh, velocity, and I will talk about conserved system. So density is conserved. So density is another parameter. Okay. Uh, so let me write it down. Velocity, gamma, which is, this is a flipping rate related to persistence length, well, rather, I think V, right? Uh, and then density. Okay, fine. So now, uh, so somehow, I mean, the persistent random work, it has been studied by mathematicians since long. I mean, since long means quite long time. I mean, yeah, uh, three or four decades before. So some of physicists, we managed to invent, reinvent rather, uh, this kind of systems, which we call self-propelled particles. Of course, there are reasons, uh, because there are many, many, uh, uh, say, recent experiments, which actually drive, particularly drive this field. And what is observed, I mean, almost invariably, they have, they possess anomalous transport, uh, so, uh, for example, uh, in a, uh, pre some previous works, I mean, people actually have found uh, the transport coefficient can be singular. So, uh, which is uh, some way manifest uh, through the, say, some uh, anomalous spread of something, density, or some other time integrated quantity, uh, which goes as t to the power omega. Where in the normal case, one would find that omega equal to half, but here omega either larger than half or less than half. And uh, typically they have non-Gaussian distributions of something, say current. 
Okay, so uh, also uh, there are experiments uh, in 2016 by Takatori et al. So what they found is that once the Janus particles, so they are active Janus swimmers, uh, they are trapped in a say uh, in a potential well, and they are released. So there are many many particles trapped here, and they are released. Now they expand. But how do they expand? Well, they found quite surprisingly that ballistic propagation. Uh, so the blob, I mean, first expand ballistically, then cross over to normal diffusion. So if, if you see the density field, first they, uh, there is an anomalous transport, then I mean normal diffusion. Okay. Uh, in another work, so which is active single file transport, uh, uh, so uh, by uh, Dolai Das Kundu Das Gupta Dhor Kumar, I, I think except Dolai all are here. Uh, so uh, they studied this dynamical density correlation, so spatial, spatial temporal two point correlations, and they have this scaling in certain time regime, uh, where the growth is uh, characterized by uh, the dynamical exponent z, which they found numerically 1.67. So this is a super diffusive. Okay, so earlier it was ballistic, here it is super diffusive. Okay, so now another experiment, 2070. Avania et al, uh, they studied this uh, uh, experiment on insect swarm and how they spread. So they actually particularly studied this uh, space-time velocity correlation and their scaling and they extracted this, the, uh, so there is some relaxation time you can uh, extract from the correlation function and that goes as k to the power minus z, so k is the wave number. So, and Z is 1.2. So, it's again super diffusive. So, the current fluctuations, so they grow super diffusively. Okay, so now the question is that, I mean, uh, what's happening? Uh, I mean, wh which actually, uh, so what determines Z and whether there is any universality? Of course, we, uh, we found that several, there are several Z exponents. So, uh, so that's the question actually we answered. That's uh, our motivation. Uh, and we asked this question that uh, in the context of density spreading, so how density spreads uh, as a function of time. So you consider so a system at time t equal to zero. There is a localized thing. So the, you just imagine that ex that experiment, no? Janus swimmers. I mean that trap. Okay. So now you let them expand. So then at later times, you get a profile, density profile at position x at time t. So which governs this relaxation? So that's the question, simple question we ask. Uh, and you see, <clears throat> if you uh, think that the flipping rate, small or say pretty large. So pretty large in, in, in the sense, the particles they flip their direction. They flip their direction. I mean, quite often. So of course, then you will find some diffusion equation, right? Well, we write it down. Del del x of something. Okay. So then, what will be the diffusivity? Well, if it is constant, you will put it here. But is it so? In general, it is not. So D, the coarse grain density field, if you can define suitably after suitable rescaling of time and space, those are technical things. I will uh, maybe if you have a question, I will answer that at the end. So that D is density dependent. So this will come inside the first derivative and the square bracket term. So this will be the current. And diffusivity D depends on density, so all the parameters, all the other parameters actually I wrote there, V, gamma and rho, fine. That's okay. So that's plausible, right? And in fact, we study this limit. So that is important. So there can be actually three limits. So one is, <clears throat> first you take flipping rate tending to zero. Then you take large system size limit. What do you expect? 
well there will be dynamical arrest or some stuck configuration so that is the thing we do not consider okay fine so that's probably chandan talked about okay jamming and also we are not uh, considering that the other limit is that if first state hydrodynamic limit l go, going to zero system size going to zero then you take this limit gamma l which now depends on the system size that tends to zero so that is the limit considered by yeri right or say uh, kobir okay so now but we take the limit l tending so that's l tending to infinity so this is a large system this is core density and then you take gamma tending to zero rather i would consider any gamma so that's important and this is the particular case i will talk about today okay so that's i have written so uh, there are some studies here uh, uh, right 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 so this is the dependent system size dependent rate so okay <clears throat> fine so this uh, limit 2 has been considered here uh purban hussein uh, 2018 and there are other studies too so there are so, so here so one thing is that here we are considering collective diffusion so there is another transport coefficient which is called self diffusion coefficient so there you track a single particle and how it moves in principle they are different but they can be related okay so now we are not discussing self diffusion coefficient we are discussing bulk diffusion coefficient written here d fine similar uh, to this our study recently uh, uh, dandekar uh, chakraborty and rajesh they also studied it but in a slightly different version okay so uh, they actually studied this this version only uh, i mean this limit only but different version in the sense uh, uh, so they are model so here we, what we are considering as i told you in the beginning the persistence exclusion process so this is nothing but a bit of persistence random walk so all of us we know simple random walk and if i ask you what is the d there well their d is constant so this is i will say boring gaussian root t fine okay so now then you incorporate interaction so then you go to simple exclusion process well there also you can write down the density evolution equation and some miracle happens there d is equal to constant scp what is the d again constant well i would not say it boring but well there are still interactions so now the question is that the next generalization is this what will happen to this d okay so now these are the exclusion process and this particular reference so they studied uh, so they map this model to a mass directed mass transport processes and they studied this and in fact we will come back to it and what they found is that the diffusivity actually in leading order so you are tending gamma tending to zero and in leading order they found this is 6 eta the important thing is which is independent of density but then would ask which what density that's a different model well we come come back to it in fact rahul is there i would appreciate uh, rahul's point and how the things are related to our study or the differences okay fine <clears throat> okay so now after this actually i have uh, three important slides all are rest are details so rather i will explain the next three slides a bit more carefully okay so now we ask that well this problem there are so many parameters uh, but what are the relevant length scales in this problem uh, well in general actually it is difficult it's a difficult problem so uh, what we say we take this limit that these are things are strongly persistent so gamma tending to zero typically would consider and dilute limit okay so then we also take rho tending to zero but as we see that gamma tending to zero and rho tending to zero they are actually not independent so that makes the things 
quite simpler, much simpler than that. Okay, so how, so that <clears throat> I will just draw a diagram to identify the length scales. Well, so we are, say this is a typical configuration, dilute, particles are far apart, fine. So one obvious length scale is LP. During LP, I'm moving just ballistically. Okay, like a bull, fine. So one length scale is LP. So now, what are the other length scales? Well, other is that I would say that interparticle spacing maybe. So that is this. That's it. No, the most important length scale is that if I move in this direction, it doesn't matter where the other particles are except along this line. So that's the most important thing. So, so then how do you find the length scale here? Well, we say that the length scale is nothing but if say you take a snap and you see you put an arrow, you are going to that direction and you find where the next particle is and that is determined by the length scale in that direction. What is the mean separation which we call the gap between particles. So in one dimension, this gap G and interparticle spacing, they are same scale, but not in the higher dimension. Okay. So we find D is a function of this. To make life simpler, we say that they have some characteristic velocity. Well, we put V equal to one or say V equal to some constant value and it's finite, everything fine. Then we say, well, Fine. Then we find that it is a function of two. No, I'll come to it. I'll come to it. I'll come to it. Very good. You ask. Okay. So now, <clears throat> so V, I drop it from my thing that V is constant. We are not varying it. So D is this. So then we see that, well, there are two length scales. So equivalently, I can write D as a function of this length scale, the mean gap, I mean, whatever you say, actually mean gap, let, I mean, say, let us say mean gap, it is not clear, then I'll come, we'll come back to it. So G bar and the other length scale LP. Of course, it is very, I mean, it is uh, uh, probably uh, hopefully clear that now if you scale these two length scales, well, you see, you would see the physics would be uh, almost same, right? Except that now D will scale accordingly. So if you scale this, you get D except for this factor something. Right? So well, so what it means is that D can be written as some function if with say you pull out some LP, I'm not using the factor, but some, some factor. So it has a scaling function and this argument is independent of any microscopic details and dimension unless you find the relationship between, I mean, how that length scale actually depends on the parameter, right? I mean, length scale, you have to determine the length scales. So G bar, LP is fixed, fine. So then the question is, next question is how G bar depends on density and gamma. So it's very easy to say that G bar, I mean, can you guess what is G bar? Well, G bar is nothing but in the dilute limit is one by rho. Is it acceptable? Hmm. Right. L, L interaction, I mean, L interparticle, huh. right. Uh. No, finite density, they will be same order, but low density, they are of different order because we know L interaction, this is rho minus one by D. One dimension, they are same, but a higher dimension, they are not. In fact, that makes the whole difference. So then we claim that this argument, I mean, is pretty general. If you identify, you can identify two parameters, LP and G bar, and take the dilute density limit, this scaling function exists. And in fact, I found quite amazing that this scaling function f 
is not known. Please let me know. I mean, if you have some literature, but it's a well-known problem, but in this limit has not been studied before. And we are there to find out what is A. So that's the problem we are after. And we uh, try to uh, see what happens and what we find. Okay. Well, these, these arguments are, I think, well, reasonable. I mean, probably too reasonable people, but well, but uh, well, if you have objection, please, uh, we can come back to it again. Well, once you assume, so then, uh, well, so then another thing, so what are the limiting values of D? Well, that's very simple. Again, there are two limits. <coughs> First, you take row tending to 0 and then gamma tending to 0. Well, row tending to 0, <coughs> first if you take, so then g bar is very large. Then you take gamma tending to 0. So LP is still much, much less than that. So it's a non-interacting limit. So this is a non-interacting limit. Here also things are pretty boring. And so what it would be if I plot D as a function of rho, so rho tending to zero first, so it would be V square by gamma, dimensionally correct, you check. It is independent of rho, fine. Okay, so now you reverse the limit, gamma tending to zero, then rho tending to zero. So now gamma tending to zero, then rho tending to zero. <coughs> so particles will collide with each other. So that's the strongly interacting limit. Okay. So there, but in a strongly interacting limit, what is your guess? What will be your D? So well, dimension analysis will give you gamma G bar square. So you see, now you see, now you take, say you, now you should take gamma 10, I mean, small gamma. So small, I mean, gamma is small. So as a function of rho at low density, I mean, it's very high. At small density, I mean, at higher density, it is very low. Well, what will the function look like? The function, if you impose this condition, so the scaling function has to be like this, constant when psi equal to 0, 1 by psi square when psi tending to infinity. Okay. That I thought that is clean result. It does not depend on any microscopic details. So you take your favorite model, go to the scaling limit and you identify the function, scaling function. Okay, so I have 12 minutes. So I think that's the message I wanted to be. And I think that's pretty clear. Uh, but well, <clears throat> we want to determine the full F psi, the full scaling function. Okay, so now, uh, well, <clears throat> you see now microscopically, if you want to determine D, it is not an easy task. So you can, uh, I mean, that's not surprising. So we take two paradigmatic models. One is, well, one is the RTP, what I described. So what is that model? So RTP, so you take a lattice with hardcore, uh, part, there are particles distributed randomly with hardcore interaction. And each particle is associated with a spin variable, which flips with rate gamma. For simplicity, we consider one dimensional model. Okay, so now the particle will hop with rate one uh, towards the spin direction. And if it collides with the other particle, neighboring particle, it stops. That's it. Okay, so now we see uh, analogous and analogous model where we say, well, now if you say consider the time scale of gamma inverse. So during the that time scale tau p, the persistence time, particle has already moved up, I mean, quite bit of a distance. What distance? LP distance, right? So now we define another model where there is no spin variable, but particle makes long hops with characteristic length scale LP with hardcore interaction. So if a particle makes a say wanted to move far apart, but one particle is in front of it, it will immediately stop here. So it takes care of hardcore constant. So that's it. So these two models, they have, they possess exactly same length scale. Now we would like to ask, what is this F side? 
Well, so this model is the one of the variants uh, of model uh, studied by Mojimdar Krishnamurti Barma, uh, particular version. Okay, we also have uh, studied the dynamical properties of this in another paper, but that's different work. So it's a uh, snapshot with this psi variable for two different psi. Uh, you can see that there is a strong, I mean, disorder. This is a disorder, I mean, fairly disorder system, strong clustering and all. Well, so that's D. <clears throat> um, so that's the snaps you see. And they actually represent strong correlations. OK, so now how we characterize the collective relaxation. So I will just uh, uh, <clears throat> tell you the steps in between. Uh, so first, let us take this long range lattice gas. So we have two models, RTPs and long range lattice gas. Both are interacting and all. Here, uh, it's I mean quite nice that you actually can calculate this bulk diffusion coefficient. How? So not, I mean, it's very uh, uh, simple. So we'll have to just count. So you calculate current across a bond. How many ways it is possible? Well, many, very, I mean, various ways. Simple exclusion process, a current can be there if this site is occupied and this is not, and it can hop somewhere. But here, there are other possibilities. So particle is far apart, and this is empty lane. I mean, you have three lane. So you can, it, it's a long hop model, right? So it can make a long hop and come and sit here. So that also contributes to that. And you collect all the terms. So all the terms, and this is the, say, uh, uh, current. Um, and current, so uh, there is one simplification is that. So this current, so this is a uh, microscopic current. And you can write in terms of generalized gradient. Right. So, and from there immediately you can find that diffusivity as a function of density and gamma <coughs> LP. Sorry. Well, so that's fine. But still, the scaling uh, uh, hypothesis we know what we made or argued. So it's not evident from here. Uh, so for that, you have to go another step, uh, which is that uh, large uh, G. I mean, dilute system, right? Uh, so. Uh, the gap distribution, so say the gap is not fixed. I mean, there are various sizes. So gap distribution, uh, it has this exponential decay. So this is also quite robust and uh, you find almost, I mean, various other models too. And the gap, I mean, you can see that there is a clustering, right? I mean, when you uh, take this limit that slip rate goes to zero, so you actually uh, create larger and larger gaps. So they are more and more clustered and create larger and larger free lanes. OK. And that G star, so that is a characteristic length scale, which actually diverges if you take gamma tending to 0. OK. But there is a scaling relation because the macroscopic scale, microscopic scale is set by G bar. That is the average spacing. Average spacing, I mean, average gap, that is fixed. So average gap is more or less fixed. But still, there is a clustering. So in, you are creating more and more space. So uh, the distribution is singular in that limit. OK, but it's a nice scaling structure. That argument, there are only two length scale, right? G star also must depend on L, L LP, and rho. Uh, and uh, we construct the scaling variable psi, which is LP by G, where G bar is connected to 1 by rho, somewhere I wrote. Okay. G bar is 1 by rho in the dilute limit. OK, so then immediately, uh, so uh, but then it will depend on the scaling function. And you can uh, calculate this scaling function uh, in terms of this uh, another scaling function, G. And uh, fortunately, uh, in another work, so that is also with my students and Rahul, who is in the audience. So we found that this G, uh, this scaling function, how the gap, I mean, characteristic gap length depends on psi, the scaling variable. And it has a nice scaling property. I mean, very simple. 1 plus psi whole to the power half. Now, don't ask me how, but you can check in your simulation. Okay. And it's actually quite pretty general. I mean, I mean, you take your favorite model, scale it, you will find it. We have checked many things, and, but I mean, we could do more. And if you plug it in, then you get this nice scaling function, which is non-singular. 
but and you check, can check the limit what I have written here small psi constant large psi 1 by psi square. So it has a power law scales, power law distributed time scales. So how do you uh, rationalize this? Well, you see the there are I mean very uh, what I'll say uh, cluster states, right? So some part is quite dilute. So there are free lanes. So particle spreads quite fast, but some of the part they are actually very crowded. Particle cannot spread, and that gives rise to this power law scaling function. Okay, fine. So now I mean, how does it explain the uh, uh, anomalous transport? Well, so now here, say, system is diffusive. So then how the anomalous transport would uh, 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 come into picture? Well, that's because, only because that D has a power law scaling and you can scale your diffusion equation, your scale your space and time such that you can find a scaling function which will give rise to anomalous transport, which I will show. Okay, before that, uh, we also uh, calculated uh, this uh, bulk diffusion coefficient for run and tumble particles uh, numerically in simulation. So, in uh, using some algorithm, so which is something like that, that you uh, uh, create some uh, long wavelength uh, perturbation and you see how it decays with time. So, uh, this decays with time exponentially and the exponent or that factor which is called the decay rate. So, that actually re related to D. So, we find decay rate from there you find bulk diffusivity. So that's pretty simple, right? And you see, uh, I mean, uh, there are the details, but uh, well, this we check that that amplitude, that amplitude of the small uh, small wavelength perturbation it goes down uh, exponentially. Nice, pretty nice exponential semi-log scale, and you extract d. And for any value of arbitrary value of density and gamma, so that's the advantage. So you can tune I mean, your thing, and you can check this. Okay. So now this is the plot. Um, I have another seven minutes, right? Uh, eight minutes probably. Well, right, fine. Okay, so uh, this is the plot for these two models, bulk diffusivity as a function of gamma as well as function of density. Um, here, I mean, I would like to show that for large gamma, it is, uh, it is uh, simple exclusion. So where D you find, I mean, constant, in our simulation is actually half. I mean, well, half a probability is going uh, to the left or right. <clears throat> and as a function of rho, you can see for different gamma, for different gamma, D depends different, differently as a function of rho. So it can give rise to different power laws. So that's the upshot. So depending on gamma, if gamma is too small, so then it will go to this one by rho square limit. But gamma is moderate. I mean, it is not that small, right? I mean, so it is uh, competing with the uh, gap distribution, I mean, uh, mean gap too. So there actually you can find a different power law. So, uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> if you take rho tending to uh, zero, so then it, it is just flat. It's like SACP, it is just flat as a function of rho. But here it is not. So, uh, so the uh, main point is that <clears throat> depending on flipping rate, the power law relaxation can be different. Well, if it is so, uh, so this is a scaling. So we scaled uh, this uh, bulk diffusivity, uh, I mean appropriately scaled bulk diffusivity as a function of the scaling variable rho by gamma in broad range. You can see, I mean, uh, one, two, three, four decades and D varies one, two, three, four, five, five decades. And we see a nice scaling collapse in both the models. So here things are numerical. Here, uh, well, no, here uh, points are numerical. Line is our theory, theoretical scaling function. Uh, here we do not have any theory. We only know that uh, at large psi it is one by psi square. So that we capture, but uh, for small psi, it actually deviates from one by psi square. And that's the thing. Okay, so these are details. We have checked something. Uh, I will skip this also I skip. Uh, so we actually uh, uh, did this experiment. I mean, how the density profile varies with time. Uh, so these are the experiment. We take this box localized thing. And uh, so these are the profiles. Lines are, simu uh, sorry, lines are theory. Points are simulation. I mean, quite good, I suppose. 
uh, except at the tail. I mean, you see two decades of density. <clears throat> well, that is another thing. I mean, that well, let me come to the next important thing is the, how the super diffusive transport arises. Can I take another minute? Okay. So, super diffusive transport. So, <clears throat> you see, earlier I show, showed to you that the uh, spread can be ballistic, and we wanted to check whether adjusting your parameter such that you can reproduce that ballistic transport. So we adjusted gamma such a way in that regime, you have uh, uh, the dependence of density, uh, dependence of diffusivity on density is one by rho form. So that you tune, right? Okay. So, I mean, quite, uh, it's a pleasant surprise. Uh, so we uh, started with some, uh, I mean, uh, localized density profile and let it spread for different times. You scale time ballistically, uh, space by time. And LH model, I mean, well, you see reasonable collapse, uh, maybe except at the tail for uh, RTP. That's okay because, I mean, it is not strictly one by row because it's, see, I mean, slowly crossing over from one power law to another power law. So, uh, well, so that probably explains the uh, deviation of the tail. But well, so the lines are the simulation, uh, lines are the theory. Uh, I mean, if it is uh, one by row type of form, so you can actually uh, immediately scale your, uh, this diffusion equation, space and time, such that you get the scaling function R xi of this form. So that explains the ballistic transport at the initial times. Okay. So later times, of course, I mean, it will be diffusive. Okay. So, and also we checked in uh, higher dimension too. This is for run and tumble particles in two dimensions. Uh, well, this much we could do. Uh, well, uh, and also similar. So you see two dimensional diffusivity as a function of rho for different flipping rate. And we scale it. I mean, it's reasonably good. So the right panel, the scaling variable is rho by gamma. And similar scaling, we have observed in other models too, like uh, LH model uh, and active hard disk model. Okay. Well, so uh, maybe uh, another one minute, uh, I promise that the current fluctuation also we calculated in these models. So actually a broad class of model, what, I mean, let me tell you, the, I mean, we actually proposed the truncation scheme where you can uh, truncate the otherwise infinite hierarchy of current, density, and their moments to only current and density correlations. Using that, actually, you can, well, within that approximation, you can exactly solve for microscopic current fluctuation. So, I mean, how many particles moving around across a bond up to time t, which I have plotted here. That is the last slide. So, well, this is a bit of digression. This is a sand pile. Very interesting. I would like to discuss. So, there you see, I mean, at, <clears throat> well, this is a small t. I mean, small t means t scaled by L square. So, the scale is the diffusive scale. Small t, it has root t growth uh, uh, for certain parameter values. So, root t is normal, SCP, simple exclusion process. Other uh, parameter values, these sand pile models. So, this root t growth uh, gives rise to anomalous growth. Okay. So, this is another mass chipping model where there are correlations and they are somehow our truncation scheme is exact. In spite of there are correlation, you can see uh, there are lines. Lines means solid lines and dotted lines and they exactly fall on each other, this Q square. Okay. This is for the long range lattice gas we calculated, uh, Q square, the bond, uh, bond current correlations. Uh, or uh, time integrated bond current fluctuations as a function of time. And it has a similar thing and, and there are singularity. I mean, this feature, see, actually it gives rise to t root t growth to some other growth. And that growth actually is very important. Uh, and in fact, in this model, there can be singularity. We can discuss it later. Well, I think I'll stop here. Uh, so summary, uh, we argue that bulk diffusion coefficient depends on a single scaling variable in the low density limit in the interacting self-propelled particles. We calculate the scaling function in two uh, paradigmatic models of uh, the SPPs. In different density regimes, 
density relaxation can exhibit super diffusion in certain cases, even ballistic transport due to the, this power law dependence uh, of diffusivity on density. And our arguments, we believe that are independent of dimensions and microscopic details. So thanks for your kind attention. Yeah, well, and the question is, what makes this long hops? So I'll make a comment also. In uh, hydrodynamic turbulence, this stellar diffusion is the exponent is 3 half. And there the hops are by the vortex of different mm -hmm. sizes. Right. Do you see something like that? In this uh, you are not, I don't no, know. I mean, we have not checked it. I mean, no, people actually have seen these vortex. I mean, uh, it's turbulent, right? Turbulent flows in uh, active matter. But I'm not very familiar. I mean, one could actually, they people say about that uh, uh, turbulent motion in the active particles, active matter systems. I think Sriram maybe, uh, or Obhishekda, they know better. But people have found it. What, what is what is leading to uh, long hops for you? You are conj conjecturing it or? No, we, we, the long range model, we are conjecturing on basis of the RTPs. Because see, it's an active matter. I mean the self propelled particles, if it starts going to some direction, it will persist. So it's a long hop, right? So. Uh, I have a small question. Yeah. There was a plot in yes. which you had a scaling half minus mu. Yeah. Oh, mu. This one? Yes. Ah, right. Yes. But so, this is hand pile, uh, the digression, but well. But that mu is known, kind of. No, uh, mu is not known. This is, well, mu is known. What do you mean by known? I mean, we found it. Okay. And we have also some scaling theory where we actually calculated mu in terms of uh, the critical exponents. Okay. Right. Uh, well. Okay. Okay. So let's thank Punyabrata. And next talk is by Davlavin.